Hi, Michael Gaffney here. How do you handle large urns for your church, your funeral work, uh, large events? Well, you buy an urn. I found this one at Tuesday morning. I don't even know if they're still open. It was $9.99. They had a slew of them. I bought the whole show. So don't ever pass up a good urn. You don't want to, first of all, you don't want to fill this thing up with foam because it will weigh 100 pounds. You put in a fake pot inside, I call it, like a liner of foam. And then I'm going to take some cardboard and, and usually I'll set these in right at the ceremony itself. So transport this separately and I'll just pack it with newspaper or cardboard to keep it steady. Don't have to be real fancy about it. And there you go. So now we're going to construct our large urn. Clippers. Um, I like to start with something big and graphic. Today I'm going to do a large uh, ballish style urn. So I like to set what I call an armature, which means I like to set the width, the height. Notice I'm not sticking these in real far. These are a little bit tough to crack. So use your hand to get a regular branch clipper, which I don't have today, but we don't need uh, I'm Michael Gaffney, the American School of Flowers. I've been doing flowers for 30 years. So I'm making a one side design, meaning all the flowers are facing that way. I'm going to come around the front now and continue. But you see what I'm doing. I'm setting the lines of my design. I want it nice and flowing. Draping. I want it big and scopy, is a term we use for blowing back, blowing up, even these little funky pieces. Clean them up, crack them, and throw them in. Use them in your design. Waste that water. So, giving it lots of depth. See how I'm going way back and way forward? That's what you want. So next, I'm going to finish up with a little more of this beautiful, like, maple. Maple uh, uh, leaf, which I found downstairs. I'm at Kennecott Brothers today in Chicago designing. Class week in soon. I'm going to put a little bit to the inside, like that. And there is I need a little more height, don't you think? I know what you're thinking. We need more height. We'll put a little more height to give it some scope. How's that look? I'm talking to my camera lady right now. <laughs> there it she likes it. If she likes it, I like it. I think one more piece. I've got some left. Toss that off to the side. Boom. There is the beginning of your piece. Think of a natural movement, and just sort of a rambling bush out in the yard. Right next, we're going to take our second shrubbery, and we're going to proceed to fill in the center. I always say set the outside, then connect the dots. So we're going more inside and connecting our dots. Now, if you have some variegated foliage, that works. It's all about giving it a little pop. This has, as you can see, a little bit of red and brown tinge. You also see how easy this is. I'm almost done. Voila, as they say in Paris. I found some curly willow in the back room. Let's add some curly willow and give it a real kapow. I'm going to add literally stems at a time. Like that. Coming around the front. Camera girl, what do you think? She likes that too. Oh, take out your eyes. Uh, 
There you go. Bit of big, bigger bag, bit of boom. Ah. How long has this taken me to do? About three minutes so far. And I'm almost done. So, as you know, at the American School of Flowers, I everything is easy. I teach you these basic formulas, and then you get to try it yourself. And you see how easy. Now, I, oh, I also have found a little bit of this. It's called um, Lumosa. It's an old-fashioned green, and I'm bringing it back single-handedly. So I'm putting some droopy, mysterious Lumosa in here. Sometimes, look at this piece. It trails nice and long. We have that trailing out, giving it that swampy effect, I call it. Put in a little bit of plumosa. I'm putting it in literally bunches at a time. Got to hit the foam, got to get it in there so it can break. And then, I don't like that piece there. And then, the finale. You don't need a whole lot. Depends on what the event is. These are very tight yellow lilies today, but we're going to use them. Maybe I'll throw in some hydrangeas. So I'm going to clean off the stems like that. And when these open up, make sure you get some in the background. Make sure you get some in the foreground. This is depth. We don't want a flat church piece. Here comes another one. These will open up into big yellow orange and the whole thing will fill in. Right there. And right there. So I'm spreading the well. You know in my book, Lower Deck, Upper Deck, Penthouse, hit all the decks. So, that's a little more in here. Put some in the center, so you have a nice focal point, focal point, focal point, focal point. That's why you hear it all the time, it's important. Put some more, a little bit heavier in the center to draw the eye in. And... Stay tuned, don't go away. I'm gonna see what I've got. And the magic buckets over here. Not a lot, let's see. To bring up that focal point. Client wants a little more pause. Okay. So not to worry. I'm going to add some. Now those crispy orange ones you see on the market would be good. Wouldn't they? Wouldn't they be those nice colored hydrangeas? But I'm going to use white today. Make sure you hit that foam. Find that foam and hit it. So we're not using a ton of flowers. Keeps the cost down for your client. But we are giving them a nice big look. Here's some hypericum berry. Some orange hypericum berry. Camera girl, are we on target? Beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. And in three, how many minutes did this take? Now. Voila, as we say in Paris. Now, this took me all of about five, eight, how many minutes? Ten. Ten minutes to make. This would roughly be three, four hundred dollars. Uh, my cost would be less, probably around a hundred. You see where the profit comes in. So, 
Don't be afraid of large pieces. Day two, we've got more videos coming up. I'm going to show you how to do variations on a theme. Uh, all flowers, less flowers. Not actually, can't do much more than less flowers on this. But it's a nice showpiece. It's good for the entryway into your event, your wedding, uh, a million things. I like to see these all around, positioned on the four corners of the dance floor on pedestals, create a park setting. So many ideas. This is Michael Gaffney. Uh, follow us and like us. I have more tutorials coming. FlowerSchool101.com. Classes in 15 cities around the country and in Paris, London, and Rome. You will be doing these in class in 12 minutes. Slightly longer. I'll give you an extra two minutes. Uh, any questions? Uh, go to our website, FlowerSchool101.com, and send me a question or a nice email. Make my day. Voila, and keep blooming.